Well, good morning, everybody. Hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, <laughs> I just want to thank the organizers again for the opportunity to speak today and uh, congratulate Zeno on a great talk. So I'm really excited to share some of our latest work with you. So tendon injuries, um, as Zeno was just talking a little bit about, are common um, with over 450,000 cases reported each year in the United States. Although many forms of physical therapy are used in practice, these strategies have had limited success in treating acute and chronic tendon pain. Current drugs for pain relief are also limited. Older delivery can require large doses that can lead to systemic toxicity and off-target effects. And similarly, local injection of corticosteroids can lead to poor drug retention and the need for repeat dosing. In contrast, hydrogel-based delivery systems provide controlled release it can be designed in a number of ways to tune release tendonics depending on the target tissue and release mechanism incorporated. However, existing hydrogel systems are limited by poor mechanical and adhesive properties, low loading capacity, and limited extended and stimuli responsive release. Therefore, the objective of the study was to develop an advanced drug delivery system for tendon with adhesive and robust mechanical properties high loading capacity, extended release, and stimuli responsive properties. Recently, we developed a bio-inspired adhesive hydrogel system that comprises a tough hydrogel dissipative matrix that can be adhered to tissues following addition of a chitosan-based bridging polymer. Through a combination of electrostatic interactions, physical interpenetration, and covalent bonding, we generate strong adhesion to a diverse set of tendons, which is robust in wet and moving environments, as well as in the presence of blood. Compared to other medical adhesives or hemostatic dressings, our adhesive exhibits superior adhesion energy to underlying tendon surfaces. Another interesting feature about our adhesive is that the adhesion generated is unidirectional, and the opposite side not treated with the adhesive bridging polymer has very low friction in a fluid environment. As these materials exhibit Janus features with both sticky and slippery surfaces, we evaluated these low friction properties by conducting cyclic loading experiments, applying realistic in vivo stresses to tissue samples, and found that the Janus tough adhesives exhibit low friction to adjacent tissues that remain stable over time below that of native tissue. We next evaluated the compatibility of these materials with cells and tissues, and found that using cells derived from Achilles tendons, that cell viability was maintained in the presence of our Janus tough adhesive. To evaluate the performance of these materials in vivo, we conducted an animal study. Here, rats were divided into groups with and without the tough adhesive and further subdivided into those left uninjured and those that had full thickness partial with excisional injuries made to the central mid-substance of their patellar tendons. We used high frequency ultrasound imaging to assess thickness of the hydrogel over time to evaluate any potential swelling or degradation. And as we expected, we did not observe any changes in gel thickness after three weeks post implantation with this non degradable formulation. We also confirmed that the Janus tough adhesives remained in place throughout the duration of the study using high frequency ultrasound imaging as well as following harvest. Hopefully you can see by this video on the right-hand side that the gels still remain attached to um, the tendon surfaces um, after that uh, excess to two-week period. After three weeks, the patellar tendons were harvested, imaged actually using ultrasound and prepared for mechanical testing. Separate samples were used for histological evaluation. Because tendons exhibit both inelastic and fluid-like properties, they show time-dependent stress, relaxation, and creep behavior after applied loading or deformation, as well as strain stiffening during loading as disorganized collagen in the toe region becomes aligned in the linear region of the stress-strain curve. For these reasons, we evaluate both quasi-static and viscoelastic properties to evaluate tendon healing. The next set of results slides groups with and without the tough adhesives are shown at the bottom, um, with uninjured groups shown in black and injured in red. Again, we hypothesized here that the, the tough adhesives would have no harmful effects in vivo on tendon. In agreement with our hypothesis, we found that tendon injury, but not application of the tough adhesive resulted in an increase in tendon uh, uh, echogenicity, as well as cross-sectional area, and a decrease in echogenicity, negative of reduced collagen packing in organization. 
Interestingly, he found that the tuffetesis was able to improve and recover the rate of relaxation um, uh, in, in, in injured tissues. And as we expected, the tough adhesive did not affect the dynamic modulus. In agreement with mechanical data, we found that injury, but not the implantation of the tough adhesive, affected tendon cellularity and shape, further supporting biocompatibility of the Janus tough adhesive with tendon. We next aim to test application of the Janus tough adhesive in a repair model of Achilles injury in a, in a, and in a partial tenotomy model in the rotator cuff. Here's just an example of our surgical procedure that we perform um, in vivo on rats, where we perform blunt transection of the Achilles tendon. We perform the urbanic variant of the Kessel repair and then place the tubular Janus tough adhesive implant adjacent to the surface. Following by skin closure. Um, following application of this method, um, we perform hind limb immobilization, full plantar flexion to reduce the stresses across the uh, tendon, repair tendon surface in the knee joint. Uh, this is a, a model system that we developed during my, my PhD at Penn. Basically, we um, apply a splint behind the, the ankle joint, we wrap the limb with uh, Weberl and VetRap, a strategy that we developed with veterinary residents in our laboratory. Then we apply an outer uh, hard surface uh, to help maintain these um, casts on the animals for one week. Um, and what we found here is that uh, indeed the materials remain in place over the surface of the healing tendon over time. We can visualize that again using high frequency ultrasound imaging. And when we do this approach, um, you know, characteristic of any repaired tendon. Um, or any healing tendon, you see a rapid increase in the cross-sectional area due to increased scar formation deposits. Um, I didn't mention earlier, but tendons do heal through scar formation, um, which is characteristic of, of um, abnormal uh, tendon-like uh, tissue. Um, and actually, when we apply our material over the surface here, we're actually able to um, reduce the amount of scarring forming, uh, which is um, a good thing to be able to make these materials or make the tendon tissue, healing to tendon tissue, um, more representative of what it's like in the pre-injury state. Because these materials also attach the outer periosteal surface of bone, we began to explore their application in the rat rotator cuff using a, a partial tenotomy model prior to adhesive app, uh, implantation. In this series of studies, we expose the supraspinatus, we apply the partial tenotomy model, um, we apply the tough adhesive over, um, we actually use part of the acromion to um, uh, shown here to help anchor the, the gels in place. And then we close the skin and we uh, examine inter the interface over time. We used um, T2 weighted MRI to confirm that they remain in place here. The gels, because they're high, high fluid content, show up um, very bright under T2 weighted MRI and they remain in place up before weeks post implantation. It did not cause any overt signs of inflammation in the neighboring supraspinatus or rotator cuff tendons. So um, that was a little bit about kind of the um, biocompatibility of these materials, but because these adhesives are hydrogel based, we hypothesized that they be, could be used for drug delivery. And we use triamcinolone acetonide as a model system for low soluble drugs. So in these series of studies, we, we loaded the tough hydrogels up to 25,000 times their solubility limit with micron sized particles and used drug dissolution as a strategy to control release. So although the corticosteroid particles are micron-sized under SEM in the dry form, they form macro-sized aggregates in, um, in, 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 in the gel um, as the tough hydrogel functions to immobilize these particles in close proximity. And here you can see how the normal clear tough gel turns to white with addition of corticosteroid. To better understand the release mechanism, we conducted funded element simulation in COMSOL to model release of the drug from the tough adhesive under perfect sink conditions where the surface concentration on the periphery of the hydrogel is assumed to be zero. Notably, over time, you can see that the model predicts dissolution of particles in turn, starting from the periphery to control release, which agrees with what we observe experimentally. Um, we can also uh, confirm this using ultrasound imaging. Again, so here the corticosteroid particles show up as white or hyper hyperechoic under ultrasound, unlike the 
um, rest of the, the hydrogel, which shows up as black um, or, or hypoechoic. And you can, again, see that this um, can be tracked actually longitudinally over time without using any sort of analytical chemistry equipment. In addition to dissolution controlling release, um, we conducted front cell experiments to show that diffusion of the drug through the hydrogel also controls release. Um, and together by a combination of diffusion and dissolution controlled release, um, we can generate extended release in sync conditions for about two weeks with this particular drug. Most hydrogels cannot support loading more than one mg per mil with orders of magnitude lower mechanical toughness. However, however our gels can support orders of magnitude higher drug loading, four times their polymer content, and still maintain strong mechanics and adhesion. To examine efficacy in vivo, we conducted an animal trial using a full thickness partial width excisional injury model to the rat patellar tendon. And following delivery of corticosteroid, we detected sustained exposure and serum supporting its extended release properties. Additionally, corticosteroid delivery significantly decreased endogenous corticosteroid levels in serum at day two post implantation. And both the Janus tough adhesive and Janus tough adhesive delivering corticosteroid had immunomodulatory effects evidenced by significantly decreased uh, GRO alpha at day two post injury um, and uh, modulation of Rantes and serum at day 14 post injury. To evaluate its effect on tendon healing, we use several readouts, including hyperglossy ultrasound Doppler imaging to visualize placement of the adhesives over time above the patellar tendon and confirmed again that they're staying in place as we, as, as we expect. The Janus tough adhesive itself reduced the level of vascularity in early healing and the Janus tough adhesive with corticosteroid further reduced vascularity at day three post implantation, uh, which coincides with uh, some of the P uh, release that we see of the, of the steroid. Although the effects of corticosteroids on tendon biomechanics have been controversial, we identified no adverse effects when examined under high frequency ultrasound um, or for soft tissue mechanics, such as the percent relaxation or dynamic modules compared to injured controls. Similarly, under two photon imaging, the Janus tough adhesive with and without corticosteroid behaves similarly to um, native injured tissues at this early time point. In contrast, um, immunomodulatory effects were present at the cellular level following injury. Tendon um, injury significantly increased tendon cellularity, which was further elevated in groups receiving the Janus tough adhesive with corticosteroids. Um, additionally, the Janus tough adhesive and corticosteroid group showed elevation of CD68, um, which although uh, through, or which through arginase one staining, um, suggests an M2 macrophage repair to phenotype, which we have found to be both exciting and encouraging for a beneficial effect on tendon healing. So in summary, um, the Janus tough adhesives address many technical limitations in, in drug delivery. The materials maintain adhesion at high drug loading, while their opposite non-adherent side promotes gliding between adjacent tissues. The materials can be loaded um, 10 to 200 times the loading capacity of other hydrogels and generate release up to two weeks in perfect sync conditions. Uh, the intrinsic properties of the Janus tough adhesive combined with release of corticosteroids were found to be immunomodulatory in vitro and in vivo and promote M2 macrophage polarization in vivo um, in healing tendon. Um, and I didn't get a chance to talk about it today, but ongoing work is exploring uh, stimuli responsive properties of these gels um, using several uh, stimuli to further extend release. And we look forward to sharing that work with you hopefully uh, very soon. Um, so thanks again uh, to our funding sources um, and the Mooney Lab uh, for uh, fantastic collaborations and the opportunity to, uh, to speak today. Um, so I know I finished a little bit early, so hopefully that leaves a little bit of time for, for questions. Um, so thanks again.